Hi guys, it's Jean Paul van Autos here, and today I'll be analyzing BZ stock for you. So the motto of this video is take it easy, but have a look at BZ. Well, before I go through my presentation, it's important to know that that is for educational purposes only and should not be taken as an investment advice, a personal recommendation, or an offer of or a solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument. Well, with that out of the way, let's quickly get started. Busy. why would you have to take a look at it? Well, the stock went up 150% in 2023. I know, I know, Nvidia went up even faster. Yeah. And there's other stocks that made these kind of returns, but still 150% is a lot. And it's always good to diversify the portfolio of stocks that you look at. And I'll do that in three parts. But first, let's get started with the history and the facts. BZ stands for, it's an abbreviation of BE Semiconductor Industries. And it's a Dutch manufacturer of chip packaging machines. Chip machines, I hear you think that's ASML, right? No, 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 this is chip packaging. Packaging is the last bit of the production value chain yeah, where the chip get made ready to be put in the end product. Yeah. The company Beezy was founded by a Dutch guy, Richard Blickman in 1995, and he is still the current CEO. Yeah. Beezy is the fourth largest listed Dutch semiconductor company behind ASML, NXP, and ASM International. And a nice thing to know is BZ has had a strategic cooperation with the American company Applied Materials ever since 2020, and it's specifically for a technique called hybrid bonding. So chip packaging sits at the back end of the production chain, but it's gaining strategic importance, and I'll tell you why. But first of all, the operational activities of BZ are centered in Asia. Asia is also currently the region where 72% of the revenue comes from. And there's a reason for it. Because the semiconductor manufacturing process consists of three main steps. It's first the design, then you have the fabrication, and in the end sits the assembly, testing, and packaging. But historically, chip packaging has always been seen as low value add. It's labor intensive and therefore it's often been outsourced to countries, for example, in Asia. And that's why China, China again, has a 38% market share in chip packaging as it stands. However, if you want to create an independent value chain, then you don't only look at the most complex part, but yeah, also the back end is a very important part to control the entire chain. Yeah. And on top of that comes that BZ has invested a lot of money in research and development for this hybrid bonding technique. And this new technique, maybe the verdict is still out there, but it may boost the computational capabilities of chips. Yeah, and therefore lower uh, power consumption and costs. Yeah. But this is the thing what makes it so interesting to look at. So that means that BZ management looks at this chart, which is basically the chart that everyone in digitization and in semiconductors lo looks at. Yeah, And they say, you know, we've made a lot of progress. We've seen a lot of growth in semiconductors, but we're now entering the period of big data and AI. And then with the quantum period coming next, this could mean exponential growth. But we're not there yet. But what's encouraging, if you read the news and you, you know this and you follow it, then it immediately uh, comes to mind that Amcor, uh, an American company based uh, in Arizona, they are building a new chip packaging fab. That's what they announced early December 2023 particularly close to TSMC and particularly testing the chips that will be used by Apple. Well, and with TSMC and Apple coming in the equation, yeah, you can only hope as a busy stockholder that Amcor will select a lot of the busy machines to be placed in this kind of fab. Now, 
Now that you know that, what makes it so interesting, let's have a look at the BZ fundamentals. The business model is quite easy to understand. They make these packaging machines. Yeah, uh, they spend some money on it, but they make a nice profit. And that's basically the only thing they do. By now, with the stock going up 150% in 2023, the market cap is around 10 million euros. Uh, did I say million? 10 billion euros, of course. So it's a relatively small stock. Revenue and income is not what you're used to from the big chip houses like NVIDIA, ASML. Yeah. In the last quarter, they made um, a revenue of 123 million. That is million, right? And a profit of only 35 million. But that means there's a lot to grow if their technique in hybrid bonding kicks in. Where it gets interesting is that BZ has been able to raise the gross margin and the operating margin throughout time. You see it here with a history of 10 years and the gross margin is now around 64%. And that is very healthy. The operating margin comes in at 35, measured in the last quarter. With this 150% rise in the stock price, the price earnings ratio has shot through the roof. Yeah, you pay now 63 times, and you see this more often in technology with a promising technique. Yeah. Uh, investors rush to uh, yeah, get invested in the stock, and now the company figures in 2024 have to prove that it's, it's not only a dream, but there's also revenue and profit coming in. But as it stands, this is a very high PE multiple. And if you're not used to terms like price earnings ratio and price to sales, then I advise you to have a look in the eToro Academy online. Yeah. Well, the price to sales ratio gives a similar picture. Yeah. 19 times uh, the sales is a very high price. So at the moment, you can't say the stock is uh, very cheap. No. But important and very nice is that BZ doesn't have any corporate debt. They do have some debt, but they have a cash position against it. So you could say they have no net debt. And other than a lot of technology companies, BZ does pay a healthy and nice annual dividend. Currently stands around 2.2% because the stock went up so much. Yeah, as the profit comes in and, uh, or the stock goes down, then the dividend yield on average has been higher in history. Yeah. But here is the core. Yeah. BZ stock over the last 10 years had outperformed stock that you probably know, ASML and also ASM International, perceived to be winners in the worldwide investing market, but PZ has come on top. Yeah. And what you also see immediately from the graph, BZ stock is more volatile. The packaging business, low end at the back, is more cyclical. So that is a factor to weigh in your investment decisions. By the way, if you like these kind of videos that we do for you, then don't forget to like and subscribe and potentially share it with your friends because that gives us traction to be, produce more of these vids. Yeah. Now, finally, let's have a look at the opportunities and the challenges. Yeah, and then I start with the regional revenue split. I already showed you that 72% comes out of Asia. I showed you that China has a 38% market share in packaging. So perhaps uh, that gives you the idea that everything out of Asia for BZ comes out of China, but it's not the fact. Asia is their most important country with uh, a revenue split of 26%. But you see below, BZ also makes decent money in Malaysia, in Taiwan, and Korea. Taiwan, Korea... That's not by coincidence, obviously the home countries for TSMC and Samsung, SK Hynix, uh, other companies. Yeah, But the opportunity for BZ uh, with this localization and independent, being independent in chip production is to sell more to other regions in the near future, like for example, in the US. Yeah. Um, it's important to know that BZ is a very specialist player in a high-tech market. I told you they spend a lot of money 
in research and development for hybrid bonding. So this is not a average packaging company that you look at. No, it's high end packaging. And you see in the segments that they choose to operate in, they have uh, they are market leader. Yeah, they have a four percent market share in dye attached. It goes too far to explain exactly what it is, but you can obviously find more on the corporate website. And if you look at advanced dye placements, they even claim to have a market share of seventy four percent, which is a lot. That makes them very well positioned if this technique picks up. If you have a look at the competition and challenges other than with ASML, yeah, it's not a monopoly. There are other parties that do advanced chip packaging. To name two by name is uh, Kulicha and Sofa and ASM Pacific Technologies, another spin-off of uh, Philips at the time, ASM. Yeah. For the industry challenges, I already mentioned the cyclicality of the semiconductor business. And perhaps the most important one is there's other advanced packaging methods out there. Technology often develops fast, and it remains to be seen that this hybrid bonding technique uh, that Bayesi has put their money on will also be prevailing and widely adopted in the coming years. Mm -hmm. well, if you add it all up in a SWOT analysis, then the strengths of Bayesi, BE Semiconductor Industries, is that they are market leader in packaging. They spend a lot of money in R&D. They cooperate with a powerhouse applied materials, and it's a financially sound company. The weaknesses, the way I see it, it's a cyclical business, yeah? and their growth seem to be dependent on one specific technique for now. The opportunity is for that technique, hybrid bonding, to go mainstream, the opportunity is new fab building all over the world to become independent in the so strategically important semiconductor production and therefore uh, to increase sales outside of Asia, but of course in Asia as well. The threats to BZ is competition. It's not a monopoly. There's other companies who could do this as well. Technological changes, yeah. why another uh, technique would be prevailing in the future. A threat is the current economic slowdown with high interest rates, um, high energy prices. Yeah. And yeah, if, if companies decide to produce less consumer products, for example, or less autos, then basically yeah, that could hurt their short-term results as well. And then the final one yeah, is potential export restrictions for the West uh, wanting to prevent high tech solutions to China, but packaging is normally not seen uh, yeah, uh, as the high tech that you would put export restrictions on. But it's fair to mention it here as a potential threat. Now, then we come to the busy valuation and the consensus. I already told you the price earnings ratio and price to sales ratio are very high because of this 100% stock rise in 2023. And you see this here back in the valuation done by Guru Focus that we cooperate uh, with for these kind of videos. Yeah, It bluntly says BZ at the current price is significantly overvalued. You see that here. But the interesting part is uh, for the longer term, in the coming two, three years, yeah, also analysts see that there's a lot of potential in what BZ is doing. And therefore, it's a very nice stock to put on your watch list and to pay attention to. And also because it's relatively volatile. So there may be chances now and then. But in the short term, the analysts that look at BZ, they believe the stock rally has gone too far to justify based on the current revenue and profit. Yeah. But longer term, they believe that BZ should be able to reap the benefits from the R&D investment they've made in the recent years. Chart here you see is only two analysts, yeah, but there are definitely enough analysts covering BZ, and that's also nice to follow from here to see where it will all end. But as the key catalyst, if I have to name one, then the opportunity is for new FAPs, new semiconductor FAPs being built everywhere in the world. 
and where they now decide to be independent throughout the entire production chain, that there's also advanced packaging fabs add to it. Now, what are the things to watch from here on BZ stock? Uh, a breakthrough in hybrid bonding, yeah, new orders coming in. So there the company figures in 2024 will be very important. Um, not only from BZ, but also from the parties that they potentially sell their machines to. Yeah, and we look uh, in 2024 for initial sales of hybrid bonding and then hopefully mass production in 2025. Look out for new factory development by leading foundries like TSMC and Intel and Samsung. Yeah. And then followed in the MCOR example by local advanced packaging fabs. To watch is the price development. Yeah. 19 times price to sales, for example, valuation means the market has already factored in a breakthrough for BZ and hybrid bonding. The stock is clearly overvalued if that doesn't pull off. Possible export restrictions are an external factor to look at yeah, as soon as they may hit advanced packaging equipment. Well, and therewith, I come to the end. Thank you for watching. And again, if you like these kind of videos, please give your like, your comments, or share it with someone else. And subscribe to the eToro Digest and Invest podcast or the YouTube channel. Thank you very much and a lot of success with your own investment.